Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. A very nice one because we have f on both sides, so that's kind of interesting. And I'll be presenting two methods. The first method is a little brute forcey, so bear with me on that, but it's really a nice idea because uh, it uses numbers. We manipulate numbers until we get what we want. Don't manipulate people. Manipulate equations, manipulate numbers, and manipulate expressions. All right? That's going to be my message. So let's get started. First method. Like I said earlier, my first method is going to be a little painful, but I think uh, I believe in the mantra, no pain, no gain. It's actually very helpful. Uh, sometimes things are painful, but uh, they help us grow, right? Anyways, so here's the first method. I have f of 7, and that equals 5. I'm supposed to evaluate f of 11. And I know you're probably saying, hey, 7 plus 4 is 11. But uh, what is 7 times 4? 28. So I, you do need 28. Can you find 28? So on and so forth. So it opens up a lot of different doors. And I'm pretty sure there is another approach that I haven't thought about. Please let me know if you find one. Anyway, so let's get started. I start with f of 7 because I know what it is. f of 7 is 5. And I'm, my goal is to find f of 11. Always keep that in perspective. Okay. So f of 7 can be written as f of 4 plus 3. Is that correct? Because 7 is equal to 4 plus 3, so we can write this. But now, our equation is actually very universal, very, very helpful, because anytime you add two numbers inside the parentheses, like your input, if your input can be written as the sum of two numbers, then it's also it can also be uh, the product of those numbers. I'm not saying they are equal, but I'm saying that they give out the same output. So it's, it's kind of like Interesting that you find two numbers, add them up uh, and multiply them, uh, use those as inputs, and you'll get the same output. So our function, obviously, is not one-to-one, -one, right? What do you think? It's not one-to-one. -one. It's not an injection. So, anyways, uh, 4 plus 3 is going to give me what next? Well, the sum 4 plus 3 implies 4 times 3. So let's proceed. F4 plus 3 is equal to F4 times 3, which is F of 12. So now I'm going to start off with F of 12. F of 12 can be written as F of 8 plus 4, but F of 8 plus 4 kind of is equal to F of 8 times 4 because the sum and the product all always give us the same thing. But 8 times 4 is 32, so this gives us F of 32. Okay, now I'm going to start off with f of 32. f of 32 can be written as f of 16 times 2. And since I have f of 16 times 2, this time I'm going to go backwards, start with the product. But I can write it as f of 16 plus 2. And that is equal to f of 18. Now I'm going to start off with f of 18. Hopefully you know <laughs> where I'm going. f of 18 can be written as f of 9 times 2. And that is f of 9 plus f of 2, right? Why? Okay, that was wrong. Never mind, I messed up. f of 9 times 2 is the same as f of 9 plus 2. I got too excited. And f of 9 plus 2 is just f of 11. So what did we do? We started off with f of 7, and we arrived at f of 11, 7, 11. Okay, this is not a commercial break or we're not, I'm not being sponsored, but it just came up. So we, we went from f of 7 to f of 11 like this all the way with equal signs. Therefore, they are equal. Conclusion. You know how they write at the end of a proof like conclusion. Okay, here's the verdict. f of 7 equals f of 11. Nice. Well, f of 7 was 5 and we were looking for f of 11. Therefore, f of 11 is also equal to 5. So we got the answer. Yay, great, awesome, right? That's it. Okay, but this is just the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And I'm pretty sure you are going to love the second method. Maybe you already thought about it. Uh, anyways, let's do the second method. But notice how the numbers work out. That's what I mean by manipulating numbers. So here's my uh, million dollar question, maybe 100K. Can you... Start with 7 and get f of 11, 
in a different way. So can I break down the 7 into 5 plus 2, then then go to 5 times 2, which is 10, and then break down the 10 into, I don't know, 6 plus 4, so on and so forth. Is it possible? I haven't tried it. Please do and let me know if there's another. Maybe there's a faster way to get to f of 11 from f of 7. I'm excluding second method, by the way, because that's definitely going to be a faster method. But the first method gave us f of 11 equals 5. All right, let's do the second method. All right, always saving the best for last. So we're going to... We're going to go ahead and do the following. Our original problem says f of x plus y equals f of x times y. Notice that this is different from f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y. So if you got an equation like this, you hopefully know what the solutions are as long as f of x is continuous. You know, this is going to be the exponential function, right? And if I switch roles and write it like this, then this is going to be the logarithms, if you go with product to product, that's going to be power, so on and so forth. Anyways, there are four functions, and those are Cauchy's functional equations. Very interesting topic. Anyways, this is not it. This is different. And here's how the second method works. Ready? Okay. It's going to be real short. So we're going to set, since x and y are arbitrary real numbers, oops, I forgot to say that, x and y are, okay, rewind the tape, x and y are arbitrary real numbers. So suppose y is equal to 0. And this is super duper powerful. I love the idea of replacing a variable with 0 or 1 because it's so powerful. People say like 0 is nothing. No, actually, it's very powerful. Anyways, I mean, multiply a million by 0, you're going to see how powerful it is. x plus 0, I talked to my so I should shut up, f of x times 0. Okay, look at this. Take a hard look. What does this tell you? Isn't this pure beauty? What is x plus 0? X. f of x equals x times 0 is 0, so f of 0. So what is so beautiful about it, right? You might be asking. Well, f of 0 is a constant. Let's call it c. So f of x is a constant function. Are you serious? Yes, I am. That's what it is. That's how this works. That's how I can manipulate all the numbers in different ways and arrive at the same answer anyways. So f of x is a constant. Therefore, we are given that, what was it? f of 7 equals 5. Okay, we are given f of 7 equals 5. We're supposed to find f of 11. But guess what? If f is a constant function, then f of 7 equals f of 11 and so many others, dot, dot, dot. But this is what I care about. f of 7 is 5. Therefore, f of 11 is also 5. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.